Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So this video today is going to be about the five stages of grief and how they can be important and applicable to someone who's going through withdrawal, adverse reactions, this whole horrible journey. So before I get into the details, I did want to mention that I am offering one-on-one -on -one supportive coaching for people who need it. I am offering it at lower rates than other places you might find online. So I offer free 15 minute consultation, 30 minute calls, 60 minute calls, and then I recently put together session packages. So if you're someone who might benefit or would like to talk a little bit more regularly, then I do offer the session packages at a further discounted rate. So I will put my online booking calendar, calendar link in the description of this video if you're interested in setting something up. I also will put a link to my website. You can check out my services there as well and a little bit more on my background and my story if you're unfamiliar with it. I also will leave my email address in the description. If you have just one single question you wanna ask, then feel free to do so. Please just keep it to one question as I don't have time anymore to answer lengthy emails. So onto the video, which is about the five stages of grief. Now, I know that most people who are maybe familiar with these five stages would think of it as applying to when you have are going through the death of a loved one. But I hear often people describing this journey, and I felt this way as well as they'll say things like, I miss my old life. I just want the old me back. I want my old brain. I want my old nervous system. I miss me. And to me, that's, that's grieving. You're grieving someone who you feel is no longer there, which you are, and you will come out again as a better version of yourself when you're recovered. But I think it's important to go through these phases. And if you're unfamiliar with these stages, then not everyone goes through these in order. They are listed in a certain order, but it can be, you can go back and forth between the different stages or go through them out of order. But I've noticed a pattern with people that I talk to through coaching and through this community that those who work through them, maybe not formally, or there isn't really a formal way to go through them, I guess, but those people who kind of come to the final stage tend to cope better and maybe make a little more progress than people who get stuck on one of the phases. So this isn't about blaming anybody. This isn't about saying, well, if you don't work through your grief, then that's why you don't get any windows. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that it is a lot of the, a lot of what's going on here is parallel to the death of a loved one. And so I think going through these stages and being aware of them can be really important. So the stages in order are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So I'll describe how this looked for me. And it basically did go in this order for me. So the denial stage didn't apply in my first withdrawal because I didn't even know you could have withdrawal syndrome or discontinuation syndrome from antidepressants. I didn't know you could have symptoms from going off antidepressants. I really didn't. So that didn't really apply to me in my first withdrawal. But as I approached two and a half years off my first drug and was getting close to reinstatement, this is when it applied to me because I got to the point where I was just in complete denial. I was like, once I learned that withdrawal happens from these drugs, uh, I just refused to accept it because I I had been suffering for two and a half years before I reinstated and I was just got to the point where I was listening to the doctors and those around me and those in the sort of positive drug groups that said, you know, you need SSRIs, you need antipsychotics because you are mentally ill. And I was having symptoms when I stopped the drugs that were largely mental and I didn't have them before I took the drugs. I took them for situational depression when I got laid off. And so I think at a gut level, I knew that this was probably a withdrawal reaction, but my head just couldn't get there. And I was so influenced by doctors and people around me, not my mom and like the really close people to me, but you know, people around me sort of at large and saying, you know, oh, this drug helped me so much. And you, you know, you did well on them for several years because I took SSRIs for several years and was fine until I came off. And so I was like, yeah, you know, you're right. This is not a withdrawal thing. This is not like, I'm just, I have mental health issues and I accept those. And so I need to take medication for the rest of my life. So it was like a denial. And I'm actually glad I reinstated, even though I ended up on eight different drugs and I got akathisia and I got way worsening of symptoms because I finally, it finally clicked in my head. It was the drugs all along and I snapped out of that denial. 
And then the, I went into the second phase of grief, which is anger. So this happened when, you know, I was in and out of the ER, in and out of the hospital during my reinstatement and poly drugging. I shouldn't even put that in quotes, but I just get sick of that word. I don't know. I took antipsychotics, benzos, more antidepressants and anticonvulsants. And I remember just like being put in the psych ward when I had developed my movement disorder and akathisia and them, you know, saying, oh yeah, you know, it's just anxiety, blah, blah, blah. And finally, you know, I had snapped out of the denial part and I just was angry. I'm like, get me the hell out of here. You people are the reason why I'm in this state. I was never mentally ill before I took these drugs. I was never like this. And now I have all of these symptoms because of you, because of doctors, because of, you know, the whole unscience of psychiatry. And I was just angry, angry, angry. And I said, I want out of here. And I signed discharge papers against medical advice. And I left and I was just raging. And I was like, I'm never taking a pharmaceutical again. I'm never taking a psych drug again. And I just went through like, how could this happen to me? And I was angry at everyone. I was angry at God. I was angry at my doctors. I was angry at big pharma. I was angry at my family, even though none of this was their fault. I was angry at myself. How could I have been so naive and so gullible? Like, why was I taking these powerful drugs when I literally just got laid off from my job? I wasn't actually depressed. And now I have all these mental problems and emotional problems. So I went through the anger phase and then bargaining where it was just begging and pleading with God all the time. God, you know, I've been a servant of yours for most of my life and I will do anything moving forward. Anything you want me to do, I will serve you in whatever way you want. I will sell everything I own. I'll sell the clothes off my back. Please just make me better. Please, please, please. And just bawling and pleading and praying and anything I could do to, you know, get him to, I was trying to bargain. I went through that bargaining phase. I'll do anything. I'll do absolutely anything. And yeah. And I went through that. And then the depression where everything just kind of crashed down and I'm like, I'm battle fatigued. I'm tired. How long am I going to have to go through now? Another withdrawal. I took way more drugs. Now I have akathisia. Like I'm ready to throw in the towel. I was making plans, you know, my exit plans. Like I'm done. I'm ready to go. I just, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm, and I just shut down. I had no motivation. I was just, I was just done with everything. And then I got to an acceptance phase where I was like, okay, I've tried, I've tried everything. I've tried every supplement. I've had every test done. I've had, you know, brain CT scans. I had the O test done. I had spectra cell done. I had live blood analysis. I had, I guess the live blood analysis was after, um, you know, I've tried every type of brain treatment. I've done, you know, CBT, ERP, TMS. I've looked into every type of brain retraining program. I've you know, just, I've analyzed this to death, researched it to death. And I just, I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to accept it. You know, I'm going to listen to the people who have healed before me, who said time is the biggest factor, nurture your nervous system, you know, avoid neurotoxins, avoid alcohol, try to remove as many chemicals as you can from your life, do things to foster good health that anyone should be doing, you know, eat as clean as possible, get out in the sun, walk, swim. And I started doing that and I stopped trying to frantically fix what was wrong because there was no fix. I had tried everything and I had, you know, driven myself nearly insane trying to fix it. And once I came to a place of almost radical acceptance, that wasn't like the key to me getting better, but it was the key to me staying sane and continuing to fight and hold on to hope. And I've noticed there's people, even protracted people get stuck in some of these. I've been talking to a few different people lately who are stuck in the anger and bargaining phases where, oh, you know, why did I do this? I screwed myself up. I used to be so normal. Like I just, I'll do anything to go back and change things. I just, I want to be normal. Like I just, I can't deal with this and I can't, I'm just so angry and I'm angry at everybody. And I it just stuck in those phases and it's understandable that people get stuck, but you have to come to a point where you're like, I can't change the past. What's done is done go through the phases it's very important to do so but try not to get stuck because it's the people who get stuck i find that they it's not their fault that they're not maybe not getting better or not getting windows or being stuck like i understand that it's it's a very angering experience a lot of what we go through is avoidable 
So, you know, you have to go through this and you have to go through that grief, but you have to get to a point where you accept and you try to sort of move on. Of course, you're not going to forget what went on and it's not just because you accept doesn't mean your symptoms are going to go away or you're suddenly healed. But I think it shifts your perspective and you can get in, you know, and once you stop trying to fix things, that's actually sort of paradoxically when you can start to get better and you can start to get windows because it also teaches your brain and your body, okay, I can relax now. I'm not in fix it mode. I'm not scrambling to research. I'm not scrambling to try to find the one magic pill, the one potion that's going to cure me. That keeps you in that limbic system dysfunction loop. It keeps you in that fight or flight even more so because you're just trying to fix, 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 and you're just frantic. And you go on the forums and you're reading all of the protracted people's stories. Well, what did this person do? And what did they not do? And oh my God, why are they 12 years protracted? And you just, it teaches you to be stuck in that loop. Like I'm never going to get out of this. This is permanent. And it just, it feeds that fear. And what we need to do in this situation and in these withdrawal reactions and adverse reactions is we need to like teach ourselves that we're safe. So that's why I have videos about support systems and about this is part of it, like getting going through the phases because you need to feel all that and go through it, but coming to an acceptance because it renews your hope, it shifts your perspective, it allows you to just breathe. Even if your symptoms are really, really shitty and really, really strong still, that shift in perspective, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen with coaching clients where it's like, okay, I've come to this and it just, it renews their sense of hope. And that's hope is like the biggest thing. Like you need hope in this process. And acceptance is, it can be radical, even if your symptoms are bad. Mine were really, really bad, even when I got to the acceptance phase. But again, you need to, you never feel safe when you're in this situation. So anything you can do on a conscious and subconscious level to teach your body and your brain that you're safe is going to help you along in this process. Being stuck in anger, being stuck in depression, and all of that is just going to keep you miserable. And it's going to keep, yeah, like I said, none of this is just a magic fix, obviously, but it, anything you can do to renew your hope, keep your hope going, shift your perspective and stop focusing because it's so easy to just want to be in the forums all day. And that's why I've talked about them being a double edged sword, because you go in with the intent to find someone that you can, you know, find hopeful success stories and find people maybe who have had symptoms like yours that have healed but you can quickly go down those rabbit holes and read those horror stories and then you get fixated on them. You have to check for updates every single day. Is this person getting better? Did this person heal? And it just keeps you stuck in that fear response. And yeah, our symptoms, our bodies are already stuck in that response from the chemical changes the drugs made themselves, but there's second fear. And then there's these like limbic system loops we can further get stuck in when we're constantly living in the forums, we're constantly living in this whole, I have to fix it. I have to fix it. It teaches our brains again, that there's, there's this threat. There's something wrong that we need to fix. And it keeps it in that panic mode. I did that for so, so long and radical acceptance is a really, it's a really good place to be in and but going through the phases is also very important so I feel like I'm starting to ramble let me know your thoughts in the comments do you think that this is applicable in this situation or is this better suited to people who are going through the death of a loved one but we are going through a sort of um, metaphorical death of like our old selves and so coming to this place and going through these phases is very very important and not getting stuck in them is also very important because people who get stuck really have a hard time moving forward and again you're you're almost teaching your brain on a secondary level that we need to you know keep this fear response going we need to constantly be reliving the past we constantly need to be fixing we constantly need to be obsessed with who's getting better and who isn't. And oh my God, I'm an, I'm the anomaly. I'm never going to get better. And that doesn't do anyone any good. So that's just my two cents. Let me know what you think about it. And are you going through these phases? Did you go through them? Do you feel like you're stuck? Um, yeah. And if you want to chat, feel free to book something. I'll leave the link in the description, like I said, and I hope you are doing okay. And I'll see you next time. Bye.